Here is a summary of Kepler's laws of planetary motion. For illustration purposes, I will use the simulator My Solar System from phet.colorado.edu. The first law says that the shape of the orbit of a planet around the Sun is an ellipse with the Sun at one focus. An ellipse is an ovate shape defined as the locus of points for which the sum of distances from two foci remains constant. An ellipse has a long axis known as the major axis and a shorter axis known as the minor axis. As the planet orbits, it will sometimes come closer to the Sun, known as perihelion. When it is farthest from the Sun, it is known as aphelion. Note that in the real solar system, most planets have orbits that are very nearly circular. A circle is a special type of ellipse where the two foci are co-located. Law number two says that a line drawn between a planet and the Sun sweeps out equal areas in equal time intervals. What the law really means is because the planet has a line joining it with the Sun that is longer at aphelion than it is at perihelion. At perihelion it must go a further distance along its orbit than at aphelion in the same amount of time. In layman's terms, at aphelion the planet moves slower, at perihelion it moves faster. Law number three says that the square of the period of orbit of a planet is proportional to the cube of the semi-major axis of that orbit. Note that the semi-major axis is the geometrical average distance of a planet from the Sun. Because period is inversely proportional to speed, what this law really says is that planets that have orbits farther away from the Sun have slower orbital speeds. This has important implications in explaining apparent retrograde motion that was one of the key motivations in the development of the heliocentric model of the solar system.
Note that Kepler's laws are merely descriptions of the observation of planetary orbits. They do not actually explain why the planets orbit the way they do. For that explanation, you need the law of gravity and the law of conservation of angular momentum discovered by Sir Isaac Newton.